Hi, and welcome to lesson number two of your certified personal fitness chef program. Master Chef Marie has a wide array of foods ready for you. Pay attention, learn, and have a good time. Welcome back. Today we are going to explore barbecuing. And as any uh, lesson that we've been through, uh, we have to wash our hands, and I already did this the proper way, as I explained during lesson one. So now, for barbecuing, we have different things that we're going to explore. And this will also explore various uh, techniques that we need to learn about barbecuing. Uh, so we'll prepare some beef, some chicken, some hamburgers, some fish, some seafood, uh, in this case, some shrimp uh, brochette, and then uh, how to cook vegetable, starch, and even bread. Let's start with our beef here. We have some nice sirloin steaks that are marinated, and before you put them on the barbecue, you want to dry them out because if you put that marinade on there, you're going to set a pretty nice fire. And we don't want to do this because it would result basically in burning your steak. So we will make sure we dry it very well. Again, the marination here is your beer marination. And you have the recipe in your manual. So I will not go through detail here. And we're going to dry it very well. We have set our barbecue, meanwhile, on high. For those nice New York steaks, we want to cook them quickly. We want to sear them. You can leave a little bit of the herbs on it. It's okay. Not too much, because again, they will burn also. So what we're going to do, make sure you're very hot, and immediately put your steak on the hot area, the hottest, and you can hear the seasoning searing pretty good here. Let's put it so you can see on camera. Now you can disregard this. And we're going to cook it for two minutes very quickly. So let's put our little timer to make sure we don't forget. We're going to close it. Why? Because we want to create an even cooking. And it's like, consider your barbecue like an oven. So you want the temperature to stay very even all over through the barbecue. We'll use some of our very large, long tongs. You want to use long utensils with the barbecue so you stay away from the fire. You don't want to burn yourself or start your jacket to catch fire. That wouldn't be too good. So we also check here our temperature and uh, we see it's very high and that's perfect. That means it's really on high. If it's too high, if you feel it's burning a little too much, each barbecue is a little bit different, then lower it down a little bit to the right temperature. After the two minutes, what we will do is we'll turn the meat to 90 degrees in order to give it a nice crisscross browning look on the surface of the steak. It's a matter of presentation. Uh, it's not a necessity. It will not affect the cooking. It just affect the presentation. Now, what we can talk meanwhile, here I have very long tools. This is even a longer one. If I feel not confident with this, and I need to be a little further, this is a perfect tool. Very long. And less chance to get hurt. Same thing for later on, our fish. Very long, very strong, firmly made product. And it's very important. You don't want those little plastic things. Okay, so 90 degrees, we're going to turn it over. 90 degrees. Let's see. And we still leave it on high. We're cooking those steaks medium rare, kind of on the rare side. Now, if you're going to cook it uh, longer than that, if you want your steak to be more on the medium, uh, done or well done, you're going to have to cook it quite a bit longer. Uh, two, three more minutes on each side possibly. Uh, and you want to rotate it only twice uh, because if you rotate more, you will have a tendency of toughening uh, the meat. So you want to avoid to turn them over too many times. And what you can do on this, meanwhile, is consider the various uh, seasoning that we can use or even ingredients we can use. I have an array here of different things for barbecuing. You have like a barbecue sauce, some ketchup, some chipolata sauce, 
uh, some Cajun uh, marinade sauce, some Louisiana Cajun hot sauce. That's pretty spicy, guys. If you like hot food, that's pretty good. Some mesquite type, some chicken flavoring. Uh, I have even here a Mediterranean. You can go to Caribbean, all kind of different things. If you don't want big quantity, you have those little packets that are pretty good. Again, you want to check for the salt content. Always look for the lowest salt amount. Let's turn, I think we're up to two minutes. Very good. Now, as you can see, we got a very nice crisscross right there, which is what we try to achieve. It looks beautiful. So let's do the same here on the other side. Here we go, we're back again for two minutes. And we close it again. What we can also do, we have some baked potatoes here. Uh, it's the same process that you would do in the, in the oven. Uh, you have to consider the size. Uh, if it's a small one, it'll cook fairly quickly. If it's a large one, a heavy one like this, you're looking at least at 30 minutes to an hour possibly. Uh, so we will cook those for quite a while. And then I have some corn. Uh, those are the starch we're talking about. And the corn is very quick. You can, of course, uh, cook them into a foil like this, or you can cook them also into um, pretty much um, the corn husk. It's also very easy, or by themselves. If you do it by themselves, you have to be very careful and keep an eye because they can pop very quickly. And popcorn might not be, burned popcorn might not be a good thing in your barbecue. <laughs> so, let's check on our steak again. We're doing really good. Let's put those potato meanwhile up there. We put them on the top part so it's not too hot and it won't burn too fast. There we go. Same with the corn. It's a good spot to put it. Let's rotate 90 degrees again. Here we go. And close and go for another two minutes. It's that simple, folks. Uh, what we accomplished is making sure it was hot enough to sear so the juice stay into the meat and which will allow it to be more tender. Once it's cooked, I do not recommend that you uh, cut it immediately. You need the juice to stay in the meat, so give it at least maybe a couple of minutes before you're going to go slice it. So all that juice does not run off when you cut it, but rather stay in the meat, which again makes the meat a lot more tender. You can at the end add some more flavor if you like. Uh, you can use the marinade that we had as base uh, flavoring. What you need to do however is you have to boil it because you need to kill any bacteria possibly that are here uh, that was due to the raw meat. So make sure that it's boiled for at least a minute or two and then you can thicken it with a, again a little cornstarch if you like a little flour mixture with butter but again if you limit your fat I do not recommend that the cornstarch is the ideal you can add a little demi glaze again to emphasize the flavor you can play pretty much with a lot of those sauce and create your own two minutes again let's check our meat perfect so on both sides again with very nicely crisscross section and we're pretty much done. So I'm gonna remove them. Let's put this over here. And we're gonna let this continue cooking. And we can finish this with either a little parsley to make it look nice. You can of course drizzle a little bit of flavored oil if you like if you want. I have some nice roasted garlic so I can add just a little pepper just to moist it. Not much and that's it. You don't have to add the oil again if you want to limit the amount of fat you don't have to do this. You can serve it very nicely like this and enjoy with a nice vegetable combination and a potato. Bon appétit! So we're done now with our New York steak. Let's get to our hamburger, one of the American favorites and one of my favorites, honestly. Um, but before we do this, we need to clean uh, the grill. 
Again, you don't want to cross contamination, as we learned previously. So use your nice barbecue brush. There we go. And then we need to oil the grill again so it does not attach too much. So we just have very little oil, not too much, otherwise you start a fire. And that's enough. That's just enough. Make sure that meat does not attach too much. There we go. So here, two patties. You can start either side, it doesn't matter. And we're gonna cook it for four minutes on each side. Let's turn over our little corn here a little bit to even the cooking. Same thing with the potato. If you sent it to heat, I would recommend to use the tongue, not your fingers. Here we go, so we, we're good for four minutes. Let's put the timer on. And let me explain a couple of things about uh, hamburgers. You have different meat you can use. Uh, of course, uh, beef. Uh, I would recommend not a totally low-fat type uh, burger, but rather an 85% uh, percentage of fat because it kicks a little more moisture into it and the barbecue has a tendency to dry the meat, so you want a little fat in it. But at least it'd be a little better than 100%. Uh, you can go lower fat with, of course, a turkey uh, hamburger, but you're gonna have to flavor a lot that meat because turkey is kind of blah, blah. So is chicken, you can do it with chicken, but you need to bring some flavor to those burgers. Uh, also be aware that chicken or turkey get very dry, so you wanna bring some moisture. One way to do this, is to put a little more liquidy sauce type rather than dry herbs or dry seasoning and so you use more maybe a marinade type or even some kind of flavoring sauce barbecue sauce uh, into it and that will help to keep the meat moist also you can put uh, some water bath in there which we use later on for the technique for chicken which bring a little moisture into the barbecue and that would help to avoid dryness too quickly. Uh, we always have a high temperature on this uh, for, for cooking this hamburger. A lower temperature will cook too slowly, not sear the meat, which we want to do again in order to keep the juices inside. So we're about four minutes right now. Let's turn them over. Very soft. Ah. There we go. Uh oh. Uh, when you do prepare your hamburgers, uh, buy the meat by itself and mix it roughly with your seasoning, your herbs, whatever flavor you want to bring in. But don't compact them very thin. Uh, try to leave air into it, and that makes them a lot more palatable and also more uh, moisture is retained because of the height of the hamburger. So we're cooking four minutes again. Now the uh, hamburger uh, bun that we have here will go only towards the end. And if you put them too soon, you will basically burn them. So we don't want to do this. Another solution to burger, which is not necessarily a meat type, but let's say a vegetarian type, is to use those beautiful large mushrooms, portobello mushroom. You remove, like I just did, the trunk. You have two ways. You have the lazy way, which to leave the uh, skin on, which on the other hand protects the mushroom a little bit better. Or remove the skin, as I explained in a previous lesson, how to remove it, and have it bare like this. Make sure you might oil it a little bit before you go, so it does not dry out. And that's a good alternative to a meat burger. You can also make burger with seafood, like a salmon burger. It's a very popular one. This cooks very quickly, so it's almost at the same time I'm gonna put it here as those burger to finish. You don't wanna cook it too much, otherwise it will get very dry and not a very tasty item. You can also marinate those portobello mushrooms and bring whatever flavor you desire. Again, I kept everything closed while I was cooking in order to keep 
pretty much the moisture into my steak or my burger. Yeah, very good. So let's check. It's getting pretty much there. So we're gonna turn them just a second and that should be good enough. Let's put our burger here to heat them up. You don't have to oil those. That's always a little less fat. You can oil them if you like to, but why adding some fat to a very nice bun already? Let's leave it for 30 seconds, no more. Now we can add to our burger various ingredients. I'm gonna just add a little tomato. I'm gonna slice nice thin slice. I use a serrated knife for tomato because it's a lot easier to go through the tomato. And you make a nice clean cut. Now you can put onion, you can put some sliced onion. If you wanna also roast a little bit those slice, you can do that. Let's check our bread before we burn the bread here. Good. Again, use the tongue if it gets too hot. It's pretty much done. You want a little toast, but not too dark. Same thing with the mushrooms. The mushrooms here, we have a little line starting. You can do the crisscross also there. We remove that bread, it'll stay warm. If you want to keep it warm, you can just put a little aluminum foil on it and you would be in good shape for a little while until this is ready. We're almost done. Let's prepare our little buns here. Now, of course, you can put, you know, uh, a lot of different things on your burger. You can, again, add some barbecue sauce to it. Mayonnaise, some people do. But remember, mayonnaise has a lot of fat, and I do not recommend this if you're trying to be a low-fat diet. Use more ketchup, which is a good idea, very low-fat. You can, again, use different seasoning, or mustard, even. I, I personally like it with a French mustard. Here we go. This one still giving me trouble. So we're gonna use this. There we go. Okay, let me put that down right here. I gotta check on my mushroom before they overcook. Let's do them one more time on that side. And then we can present these very nicely. A little tomato on each. Then, there you go nice height. You can put some letters. Ooh, I've got the wrong cup on that one. Some letters, whatever your light is, and your seasoning. Now the juice is coming out, which tell me, see, it's telling me it's done. Not more, otherwise I'm going to lose all that juice, which is very flavorful again. You can put a nice what I would do here, to give it a little nicer flavor, it's very dry at this point, so I'm going to put a little chili to give it a little spice, a little chili oil flavored on it, just a tiny bit, to give it a little punch. It can be a little bit boresome if you don't add some creativity to those type of burgers. There we go. Again, here's a nice, healthy Thai burger right here. I think I want to put it upside down, but it doesn't make a difference on that one. There we go, two types of hamburgers, a healthy one, very low calories, and a meat one, healthy too in different ways, but a lot more fat. It's up to you to choose your health. Well, now we're gonna prepare some seafood here. We have a nice filet of salmon and some uh, nice brochette, shrimp brochette. When you prepare brochette, uh, limit them to uh, basically the meat type. Uh, if you mix vegetable to it, the vegetable will cook faster than the uh, meat that you put on there and they'll burn and so it's not a good idea. Just keep, you can do different type of seafood, lobster, 
uh, shrimp, a uh, scallop, you can do that together. Uh, this here is just a marinated garlic uh, shrimp. Buy the large, the largest you can find because they hold better and they'll stay better on your uh, brochette. You can use different type of brochette, but the wood type and the uh, metal type. The metal, you always have to use gloves. Make sure they get very hot and you can get bad burn. The wood type uh, disadvantage is they can catch fire. <laughs> it's not really nice. So what you need to do is dip them in water before you load them with your uh, food and that will prevent that. You might spray them also a little bit with water before you put them in there and the advantage is very fast. You don't have to clean afterwards and that's why I like to use the wood type. Now to cook our fish we have some uh, dry herbs on there. We have some dill. I oil a little bit before uh, the meat and then put the uh, herbs on it so it sticks there. It does not go anywhere. If I move it down like this it's not falling off in any way. And if you didn't put the oil, it will run off. So you want to make sure you put a little bit of oil, not too much, don't need much. And we're ready to go. So our fish is going to take a little longer than our brochette. So I'm going to start with the fish. And about halfway through cooking my fish, I will put my brochette. My brochette will take two to three minutes per side to cook. And you want to cook them on high, very quickly. Here, same thing, same process as me. Uh, so the juice stays inside and two, three minutes is enough on each side until they become opaque or if you want, very pinkish. Uh, now, as far as the salmon, you want to start with the meat side uh, and you're going to give it a nice golden color. Once it reaches that golden color, you turn it over onto the uh, skin side and you can leave it quite a bit to finish cooking and it won't affect uh, the salmon the way it looks. Also, if you need a very nice presentation, after you finish, even if, let's say, the skin is burned, it doesn't matter, you don't have to show it, you can just remove it from the bottom and still show a nice piece. When barbecuing uh, fish, take large piece, nice chunk, otherwise they fall apart very easily and it's very difficult. They attach a lot of time to your grill, so you really have to oil your grill a lot. You have to keep oiling all the time in order to avoid to stick. Uh, the fish, remember the meat is very fragile and it will really fall apart very quickly. As soon as you see part of the flush separate, uh, it means it's pretty much cooked. So you gotta keep an eye very closely to it. We're gonna cook it again about three, four minutes on each side and that should be enough. Probably four minutes, depends how thick it is. Uh, we have to have our barbecue on high at first and then you lower it down to a medium temperature. You need to have it very hot before you start, but then the high heat would burn it too fast. It's more fragile than meat. So we go to a medium. So I'm gonna place it to medium now. Here we go. Medium on this one, medium. And our brochette in the same, more on a little high. The brochette will be a little more on the high side. Again, you have to clean very well before you place your stuff between any type of food that you cook you have to clean remember cross contamination and then we oil again as much as we can again quite a bit this time because the fish will attach so i need to make it very oily And I might even drizzle a little bit on my fish if I see it a little bit too dry to make sure. Just a little drizzle here to help it a little bit. There we go. For a split here about four minutes. And a little brochette. There we go. We're gonna close down. What I might wanna do a little bit here, I don't trust those wood, so I'm gonna spray a little bit of water.
just to keep them moist a little bit. Again, let's wait for three, four minutes. Now you can do a lot of different fish. Uh, they all cook a little bit differently. The white fish has a tendency to fall apart very easily, like I explained, so it's salmon. The steak uh, versus a filet is also different. Uh, a steak will hold together a lot better. Uh, the filet, make sure you have a wide cut, so rather than narrow and thin, otherwise you will not cook even or fall apart. Uh, as far as the steak, uh, you know, uh, the size is also important, but mostly the thickness is the most important part because that's what will hold it together. Let's see. So let's turn this. They are getting very hot. And this one is browning quite a bit. Let's see how we're doing. See, we didn't attach, it's beautiful. I think we're ready to turn. Yes, we have this little brown here that started. It's beautiful, that's what you're looking for. A little bit of the flush here is starting to cook. You see just the whitish coming. Very good. As you noticed, our fish did not attach which is beautiful. Again, it's that golden color starting here. If you were to cook it longer, it will start to blacken here. It's another way you could bring a different flavor to it. But again, you don't want to do that too much. Fish is better kind of on the less cooked side rather than well done. Um, it tastes a lot better. Uh, it's more tender, flaky, that's the way you like to have your fish. We're gonna go on four minutes again. And I think uh, pretty much our brochette are gonna be ready in a minute. And the brochette, what you can do again, if you don't want to add too much fat to it, then I would simply leave them as and uh, serve them with a nice uh, top salad or some vegetable, a salsa would be a good idea or by themselves, they're very garlicky flavor, they taste very good. Um, or again, we can use a little herb, uh, flavored oil. I think I'm gonna use the tongue now, they're starting to get very hot. Not quite. You will notice that our shrimp are also, let me get a glove, it gets too hot. I want to show you something. You notice that they're shrinking. That's also a sign that they're getting cooked and it's a natural process. They will shrink. Basically, some of the water is evaporated and that's also why you don't want to overcook them because then they will become dry and uh, not as tasty, rubbery rather than very nicely fresh flush. You can continue to baste them with a little oil again during the cooking if you like. These seems to do very well so I did not add any more. If you do your marinade uh, for at least 20 minutes, I did those overnight which I think gave them extra oil, extra flavor uh, and that's why they don't need more during cooking. Let's take them out, I think we have enough cooking. Yes, good. So again, if you want a, a darker color, you can do that. But like I said, I like them a little less on the less cooked side. And you can drizzle a little oil here. Enjoy them hot right away. If you reheat them, they will dry more. So let's get a nice basil oil to complement with the garlic that I put, flavored earlier. Here we go. So now you have a nice combination of 
basil and garlic flavor. It could be a great appetizer, a great meal in itself, like I said, with a nice salad or some pasta even, or some nice vegetables that we will prepare in a little while. I think we're pretty much getting ready here. What I'm looking for, and you can see it here, is when the flush start to separate like this. See, here right there, I'm starting to get pretty much a separation. So I'm, I'm starting to flake. See, this is what they call flaking, when the flush is starting to separate. So a little more, I can see it starting, but not quite done, it's still a little, I can just say, uh, when you touch it, it's, it's a little bit rubbery still, where it should be firm when it's cooked properly. So we'll wait a little more. Again, it depends of the thickness of the thickness of your fish. It will take at least four minutes to five minutes on each side, and maybe more. In this case, a little more because it's thicker. Again, you can use a lot of different seasoning in, uh, for a fish, uh, Caribbean, dry herbs. You can also uh, marinate it. If you marinate, again, do not do it too long, 20 minutes at the most. Uh, after that, especially if you use any uh, vinegar or, or acidity, lemon, it will start to cook the fish in it. Uh, that's what they call ceviche. Let's check it again. I think we are going to take our corn out here we go. Our corn has been cooked long enough. It doesn't need any more. Okay, let's check on our fish again, see if we are pretty much done. Remember to keep an eye on this. You never know if the gas get off or if you smell something unusual. Stop immediately and check it out. I think our fish look fish. It's a tough word for me. It looks pretty good and it's done. You can see it didn't attach. Beautiful. Roll it to the side here, it's in one piece, beautiful color. There. Always, if you do that, use the top of the fish, not the bottom, because you take the risk of putting your finger to the grill, so don't do that, on the top, to push it. There we go, this looks beautiful. Again, you can serve it as is, or just a little touch of oil for, for making it flavorful, or if you're gonna present on the plate, you can put a little few drops around your piece, and that will do the job. The herbs, have you noticed, the herbs have not burned. They are nicely green color. That is because it's the right temperature. If it burns, you're, you're basically too high in temperature. And a little bit of our parsley for presentation. Not that much more around the plate. It doesn't show off on there. It will show off more on the shrimp here. Maybe a little touch of lemon. Lemon goes very well with seafood in general. Lime also is a, is a good possibility. There we go. Again, present that with some nice vegetable or some nice pasta is a good idea too, depending what you're looking for your diet. Enjoy. Welcome back. Uh, we're now going to prepare our next item, which is uh, chicken. Uh, we are going to uh, use a, a special technique to flavor this chicken uh, with mesquite briquette. And you want to soak them for at least 20 minutes in water before you add them to your little metal container. You can buy those in the Home Depot, or barbecue places, different places. And what it's going to do is flavor pretty much uh, bring a little smoky flavor to the barbecue and flavor the chicken. Also what I want to do is have a water bath in an off section to bring a little moisture. Chicken as well as turkey has a tendency to dry a lot so you got to figure a way to bring a little moisture uh, into the basically barbecue or oven and that will keep your chicken a lot more tender. What I did here is I choose this type of chicken with a, a rib and the skin for one simple reason. The skin will protect the meat of my chicken. And when you want to eat it and uh, you're looking for low calories, 
you remove the skin, but your meat underneath will stay nice and, and fresh and, and tender rather than dry. If you use breast of chicken with no skin, which we all know is healthier for you, the problem with barbecue is it dries the outside of the meat, has a tendency to dry then the inside, and it's a little tougher than this kind of situation. It's again up to you if you're looking for a, a lower fat uh, type dish. If you use the uh, chicken without the breast, make sure you oil it a lot and sear it very quickly on very high heat and then put it on the off section uh, to continue to cook by itself. Here again, I put right under between the skin and the flesh, you can see I put a rub. Rub again is a mixture of dry kind of uh, powdered, grainy uh, seasoning type and as well as herbs. Uh, in this case, I used uh, a Caribbean seasoning. I like it to bring a little spice to my chicken and give it a nice flavor. I oil the, the, the fat also, the skin part, so it does not attach again through the uh, process of grilling. And we'll also, among uh, the cooking of the chicken, learn how to heat a little bread. Nice here, in this case, it's an olive bread. Uh, yes, you can cook uh, bread in there, you can reheat bread. You can do fantastic, also pizza. Yes, you can cook pizza, like if you were to do it in the oven, the same process. And we're gonna start to basically cook on the skin side first. And you will understand why later. We're gonna give it a nice brown color. We'll finish cooking on the other side because what I want to achieve is having the fat of the chicken still dripping over the chicken to keep moist that meat that we have right under the skin. If you do the reverse, then guess where the fat goes? Right into your barbecue pit right there instead of moisturizing your chicken. And so it's, it's a very important procedure. Usually it will take about three, four minutes. Again, you close the uh, barbecue, you have it on high, and you let it brown very nicely. Do the same on the other side for another three, four minutes. And once it's all nice brown on both sides, then we're gonna put it on the off side. Again, have one side totally off. It's very important. It will lower the temperature, but still inside, imagine being an oven, about 350, 375 temperature inside uh, at that time where it's off. Now I leave the right side on, on high. That's what generates heat. It's very important. We will also check uh, our potatoes that we put quite a while in there. I think by now they should be prepared. And uh, one way to check for them is to use a pointy knife one of those utility knives and poke it into it and we'll figure out if they're done or not. If they do go easily into it, that pretty much tells you that they are cooked. So in this case it was. So we will remove them. Don't worry about the flare on your chicken, it's no big deal. Again, remember you have your skin protecting your, your meat. Okay, let's check on the chicken now. I keep losing my tongue. There we go. Yes, good. See, now my, my chicken is pretty much dark here, but if I look under, I'm not burned. So it's a good. Very good. So let's seal that. Again, on those potatoes, what I did, and you might not have seen it over there, is I just go inside and as you can see the knife goes very easily in it in and out so it means it's pretty much cooked and that's what you're looking for same thing when you do them in the oven it's the same process so let's wait a couple of minutes let's see what happened here this was our corn that we removed a little bit earlier also you want to leave it in for a little bit and as surprisingly as it is it does get brown even though if it's in a foil and that's a normal process let's have the potato again it's very hot so if you're sensitive to heat you can use your glove 
And again on the E, you can easily put a lot of butter like some people do, but for a healthy choice, a little bit of olive oil or grapeseed oil, one of those oil. That way you control a little more the amount of fat and you don't have to put too much. Remember to use flavored oil. Uh, it goes a long way. You don't have to put much, but you'll be surprised. What you can do with a potato in order to make the oil go further is open it a little bit, break it like this a little bit, which will allow the oil basically to go through and spread more, even though you don't put that much. There, you fluff it a little bit. And then just a little bit, put your finger in the end of the bottle to control. Just a little bit, that's it, that's all you need. Here on the corn, you can do the same thing, rotate it a little, or just put it on the bottom of the plate either and turn it over like this. That way you don't put too much. And that's it, you can add a little salt if you like, but this is a nice way and you will enjoy the potato because of the flavor that is created by that oil. A little green, and we're gonna go turn our chicken now, if you put sour cream or any, I recommend to use a low-fat or non-fat sour cream, rather, but even better to go without it and enjoy a nice accompaniment here. Let's go put this in. Now we're going to move our chicken to the non area. And the bread kind of in between area. I don't want it to burn. The chicken will continue to cook for about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. It all depends uh, how thick and how big your piece is again. Well, it's been about 20 minutes, so let's check on our chicken. It should be ready. Let's see. So what we do is check. Yeah, nice and firm. That's what we want. Excellent. It's done. We don't want to cook any longer because then it dries out again. And now we can remove the skin. See the flush is nice, not burned, nice and tender here. To serve it again, you can do that. It's pretty hot, be careful. It's nicely ready here. What we can do is serve a nice little tomato with it. We're gonna go very quickly, maybe a little onion to brown. Let's check our bread. I think our bread might be also ready. You want the bread to be uh, pretty much hot so you can't touch it long in your hands, like this. It's firm, but it's coming back. It's bouncy a little bit. That's perfect. And then we can cook it. You can hear, nice, crunchy. The inside is not dry. It's just warm to the touch. And that's the way you want to serve a nice piece of bread. This one is an olive bread. You can eat it like this, it tastes very good. We do that in the south of France a lot. Uh, we put tapenade or other different tomatoes, different things on it, or just a little bit of oil. Again, if you wanna add a little extra, just a little bit, drizzle a little bit of oil, not much. The tomatoes cook very quickly. So what you're looking for, let me grab it, is when it start to get a little wet on the outside like this, you don't want any more because otherwise they fall apart. The onion you want pretty much a brown color. It needs a little more. See our tomato? This is our fast. It gets very soft otherwise, so we don't want to cook, cook it longer. We want to still be able to hold it. While it's in the plate, it continues to still cook, so we don't want any longer. Now you can add that oil. Little flavor, basil, garlic oil. You can drizzle a little bit also of garlic on top if you like, or breadcrumb if you want. A little cheese, Parmesan cheese if you want. But if you want to stay low fat, healthy, this is a simple way. A little grapeseed oil flavored. It's a good accompaniment. A little bread on the side if you want. Let's finish our onion. Now those misquit brisket here cannot be reused. Usually after 30 minutes, they're no longer good. 
they lose their flavor that you are trying to put. So you will need to start with a fresh batch. Again, let's check our chicken for dot nest. Again, we want very down here. It's cut so you can see the inside a little bit. Oh, beautiful. It's the knife is going right through it very quickly without me pushing. I smell my onion right here. Yep. Let's put the onion here. So see how chicken, how beautiful it is. It's nicely and tender. Now we're on our final uh, cooking session here. Uh, the vegetable. Let's uh, analyze a little bit what we have. We have a whole pepper here, some garlic asparagus flavored uh, with a little bit of oil again, and uh, a mix of vegetable. When you cut your vegetable, cut them large enough because um, they will follow through again the grill and you don't want to do that. Uh, the smaller, uh, the more difficult it is to hold it together. We will use to cook them this grill piece that you can buy again at Home Depot or uh, barbecue places, uh, home facility places. Uh, and it's uh, good for vegetable because as you can see the holes are not too large and they won't go right through. They won't be directly on the grill which allows them to cook nicely here without burning too fast. Uh, on the other hand, we'll demonstrate the grilling of the asparagus directly and it, you have to move very fast otherwise they burn very quickly. With the pepper, I'm going to show you how to charcoal, or charcoal I assume, uh, a pepper and then put it in a bran bag and remove the skin at the end uh, and, and you can do some very nice salad after that. So let's start with a very hot oven, again we clean the grill. We don't need to grease there because we have quite a bit of oil on our vegetable. And so I want it on very high and I'm just going to let this pepper right there burn to the crisp, really burn and you're going to hear it, it's going to crack and that's the skin cracking, it's good. Then our little asparagus, for this procedure you can almost keep the, uh, the barbecue open if you're going to do it very quickly, otherwise you can close it and especially for the pepper back there, but remember two, three minutes at the most, uh, it's a very quick process. And this here, we're going to get ready to. And let's put it right over here. This is what I talk about. Be very careful. It's a lot of oil. Always have this and the, the water. If needed, it should stop after a little bit. But always stay away from your fire. I'm looking for dark, really dark burn. I can put it in the fire, it will help, it's even better. You don't need to move the vegetable too much because you want them crunchy, nice. And it's pretty spread over, don't overcrowd the pan. Just put at a level of the pan, no more. Keep moving your asparagus once in a while. Once you start to see a little brown coming on the asparagus, it's an indication it's starting to cook the way you want it. There we go. And let's wait about two minutes. And pretty much your vegetables are gonna be done. That's how quickly that cooks. You want your vegetable to be kind of crunchy, not overcooked. Once you take them out, they still continue to cook. So don't overcook them, don't get them too mushy, that's no good, it's not as pleasant. You can flavor a different way, you can do it without almost no oil, I put quite a bit. But you don't have to put as much. I put a little more because it keeps them from really drying out too much. Let's get our asparagus out, I think they are pretty much done. Most of our cooking here that we've done today had no salt added. There's no need. I have pepper, of course, but you can always limit it and put it to whenever you want, whatever level you want. There we go. A beautiful asparagus. Already right there. 
a little. You don't need to add any oil. They're very flavorful at this point. We're gonna put it on the outside and check it out. The best way to check vegetables is they're cooked without burning yourself. Take a bite. Nice and crunchy. Very good. So they're pretty much done. Now we're still burning quite a bit. And we want to try to burn on every single side. Let's bring our vegetable out again. Protect your hands. They're pretty done. I'm going to put them on here for now. They're still sizzling. And then you want to remove, let's close this so we really burn that pepper. We can either put them like this. As you can see, they didn't fall apart. You can make sort of all kind of vegetable in there. Try to keep vegetable that cook about the same speed. Don't put carrots with broccoli and peppers. They take too long. If you're gonna do that, then pre-cook your carrots first. Parboil them and then add them to this mixture and then you're fine. This is another way to prepare vegetable again compared to what we've done with the tomato previously or the onion. This is good. Nice, flavorful. The color you see on the vegetable is the marinade. It's still there, it's still flavored. And what we're gonna do with our pepper now is what you do is you take a brown bag and you put this charcoal, really charcoal, inside the brown paper. It has to be brown paper. And you close it very tight, very tight. And you leave it in there for at least 10 to 20 minutes. What will happen, it will get moisture inside and will allow the skin to separate from the flush and then you can peel it very easily and end up with just the meat part but you can make salads, you can also marinate in oil, flavored oil, and different things. I hope you enjoy our seance of barbecuing today. And it's another way of cooking healthy here. And hope you will do the same at your place and show other people how to do these wonderful meals. An easy way and nothing to clean afterwards, which is even better. I hope you enjoy our cooking. Bon appétit again from Chef Marie.